Hi, welcome to Azure Everyday with Pragmatic Works. My name is Steve Hughes. Today we'll be talking about uh, resource groups with Azure and how to use management control or access control with them. While working with multiple customers on data warehousing projects in Azure, we've helped them through their resource group strategy many times. We already know that resource groups are a key part of separating workloads and managing content created in your subscriptions. One of the key advantages of separating workloads into resource groups is the ability to access control with or manage access control with Azure Active Directory. Here are the three things you need in place to make this simple and easily repeatable. First, you need to have an Azure Active Directory set up in your subscription. In reality, this is done because every Azure or Microsoft 365 account sets this up. In Azure AD, you need to set up groups to match the security context you plan to use. You can use generic groups such as dev or test to start, but more finite groups will be required as you move along. If you are syncing with your on-premises AD, you may be able to reuse existing groups with your resource groups moving forward. Second, create the resource group. Everything you create in Azure should be done in a resource group. I have seen many variations of doing this. Some customers currently use this to provide levels of separation for development, tests, production areas in their subscriptions. Others separate by functions such as networking or databases. I like separating by workload. That being said, if you want to manage access via resource groups, you may want to combine some of these concepts. For example, you may have your development BI resource group. In reality, you need a good naming convention to understand the purpose of the group that you're creating. You should also consider tags that can support what, to support what you're using a resource group for. It provides a different level of um, investigation and understanding. The third step is to marry the two. Go to your access group. On the right option panel, you will see the access control option also has IAM in parentheses. In there, you can add users or groups to the roles that are in context with the resource group you're working in. So it's limited to that resource group. We typically see the top three uh, general use cases being used until people get familiar or, or want to create their own roles. Owners who can fully manage a resource group, add users, add content, have uh, access to some of the security protocols within that group. So they have a lot of, a lot of permission, a lot of control. So be careful with that one. Contributors are the most common that we see used because they have the, they're the group that you want to be able to interact with the group, add content, work with resources, and so on, and without really having to be a big impact to what you're doing, um, without having to manage it really tightly. Readers are those who can, can see the resource but cannot implement any changes. That role is really a read-only type role, right? So if someone needs to audit or look through what you're doing but you don't want them to affect change on the resource group or the resources within your group, there you go, you use a reader. There are a whole myriad of additional roles. If you hit the drop down when you set up permissions, there are a lot of things that you can add to this. Um, but you will want to manage how you want to do it. I would get a plan in place, and you'll probably likely need custom roles as you move forward if you plan to use it for development and some other things that are going on. Um, as your needs grow, you can create those custom roles um, or use those fine grained permissions to limit access to your user group. Using resource groups and Azure Active Directory have the added advantage of supporting guest users. If you have contractors or consultants like Pragmatic Works who need to work in a resource group, you can create a group in Azure Active Directory with a level access you want to allow and to use the Azure B2B functionality to create uh, guest users for that group. So what will happen is, is that you know, someone like me, I can bring my PragmaticWorks.com email address to you. You trust that if I log in with Pragmatic Works, that I'm still an employee there, I am who I say I am, and so on. You can take that user account, add it to a group that has access to the resource group, so the Azure Active Directory group that has access to the, the resource group. And from there, I can be limited in my permissions and what I do within that resource group, but you can manage it. We leave, you just kill our users, all our membership is gone, we have no longer have access. But you also didn't create Active Directory users, and you can limit what those users can do beyond just that resource group. So this gives you an opportunity to um, expand what you're doing, better tie down your uh, environment, and allow for more access uh, to the workloads that need to be handled by other people. Thank you for joining us today in Azure Everyday. If you have any questions, click the link below. We'd be happy to reach out to you. Um, Thanks. Have a great day. Bye.